there's no sirens in here, so now we're airplane. Okay, it looks like we are live, and thank you everybody for attending today. We have a very special event today, and first of all, we want you to say hi to these two very experienced art teachers. And what else do you guys do? You guys do everything. Ever, yeah, well, well if, we, if we aren't, we've tried it. Artists, <laughs> gallery owners, um, Teacher, teachers, teachers, gardener, coaches. <laughs> awesome. Um, Just the two awesome individual, Elizabeth Robbins and Shana Kunz. And more importantly, these two, they represent Inspire to Paint, right? Yes. Yep. And we've seen a lot of posts out there nowadays. And we can see, um, let me see here. Actually, I hope I'm not blocking people joining in. So I just disabled the waiting room. We'll see if someone is coming in to our Zoom meeting. Or we have this broadcast out to YouTube. And I just noticed I disabled chat, so I'm gonna turn it on. So people can ask questions. Okay. I'll have to keep my glasses, glasses closed. On, right? <laughs> so let let us know if you're able to hear us. And today we are going to focus on art teaching. So I know a lot of artists, they, especially through this whole um, pandemic thing, a lot of artists are starting to find other ways to you know expand their income sources through teaching, right? And of course, there's other parts when you are, you know, teaching in universities and all that, or just private studios and all that stuff. So um, there's a lot in art teaching. It's not just like you're a good artist, you'll be a great teacher. So no. th thanks to you two, you have experienced everything you can think of as an artist. And I'm just glad that you guys are actually doing a lot for the art world, bringing on your experience and sh share your knowledge, not just the skill side but also the business side of the knowledge and just you know build out a big library out there and so first of all i want to kind of make an official announcement and that is our very special partnership between sentient academy and inspire to paint so Ooh. i know this is a great thing it. to do right the more the merrier yes it, it works it works right? yeah and the most amazing thing is when we started talking about the idea, we kind of look at each other and just say, you know what, if this is going to benefit our students, why not? Right? Absolutely. And if you notice, we always focus um, on students' needs. That's why we decided to team up and form this partnership to bring you guys even more um, content or even, you know, like lessons and every resources out there. It doesn't matter if you're Inspire to Paint members or you're Sentient Academy members, we work really hard to create the best content out there. And of course- It's just like you know. creating art too. Yeah. If, you're, if your intention is there, if you're doing it for the right reason and you're teaching for the right reason, you find your audience. And the best thing is watching your audience grow and showing them other ways to think, other ways to paint, other ideas. It's it's a wonderful thing to watch somebody just grow because they have so much at, at their fingertips. This is Shanna. Yeah. Shanna can't uh, yeah, help sorry, my hands are, but move yeah. her hands every time I know, she look at, Oh man, look at that. <laughs> so it's so fun. Like, I just love your energy there. So, you know, there you go. That's the announcement. We are really great partners right now. We have, you know, contents and you're gonna expect a lot more live interaction like this from both of us and we're just gonna bring in even more practical knowledge to help you guys to not only learn the art technique side of things and also if you have the desire to become a professional we are going to show you how how to get there and we're not talking about the hey come buy some ads on my in my magazine type of techniques yeah. we are talking about the real nitty-gritty how to based on the experience yeah. all the things that you've done and of course you know you you are someone i look up to right because you already had the beta muse production for years producing great content and you actually not just inspire me to paint you inspire me to start sentient academy 
so awesome. yeah so you know like that's why i feel like you guys are just one of the most inspiring people out there that i really look up to so i'm really honored to be able to partner with you too and just kind of take care of our students. Well, we are we are um, extremely honored to be invited to to walk along this journey with you guys. Too. Yeah. So, anyways, let's get that out of the way, and now let's kind of get into our topic today. So, one thing people kind of would like to know a lot is how do you transition from an artist to an art teacher, right? It's not like I'm good at painting and I can just be a good teacher right yeah. not not mm -hmm. everybody that is a good artist is a good teacher and not everybody that's a, a good, good teacher, teacher is is good really artist. a good artist yeah it's special skill it set. is mm -hmm. it is um, you have to really really enjoy people mm -hmm. you have to love what you're doing so much that you enjoy seeing someone else excel at doing what you love right and if you're if you're one that doesn't want to share your secrets and i've had a couple teachers kind of you know hold back and which there really is no such there's thing. no such thing as you know secrets that but you know then you're you're doing a disservice to the students so yeah yeah you do have to love people you have to have patience you have to you have to be somewhat intuitive i think to be a good teacher uh, uh, absolutely to because you could have 15 students in a class and they're all at different levels. And if you teach every single person this exact, the exact same, same thing, then it, you, you haven't done your job. Your, your job is to find their voice and help them um, make their voice sing, help them get better at exactly what they do. Everybody has a different color sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Everyone's mm -hmm. color palettes, um, feel different and you have to know enough about art history as well in order to kind of hone in on what somebody really likes to do and then give, give them maybe examples of art history of somebody who's done something in that same um thread of genre. yeah um i always when i'm or i'm teaching i always say to people look it's not my job to teach you how to paint just like me I'm, I'm going to share with you all of my knowledge and all that I've learned. And, you know, then you need to take that and apply it to your voice and to what you want to say in your paintings. It's not about learning to paint just like me yeah. at all. And Shanna does, you say the same thing. Always, always. Yeah. And, and, you know, you don't, you don't want everybody to paint like you. Yeah. You want them to, even to this from a different perspective, better, right? Yeah. 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 Everyone's voice is, um, important important and you yeah. need to just because yeah. someone it's not doing exactly the way you want them to do but if you inspire them to even become a better painter you are a great teacher because like you said that it being a teacher is all about giving right yes like if you have any of the jealousy in in the mix it's just not gonna work because you got to feel the pride like you you see your students excel you see your students getting better than you you should feel really good about yourself because you're a great teacher right, right? Yes, and right. it's a great compliment when you see even right here at sentient we see some of the students they post their work and just he, see that big jump and you, i i just feel so happy i i mean i i'm not a teacher but i feel so happy for them right it's gra very gratifying <clears throat> oh yeah they thrive yeah, and I think that's one big um, key success factor is the actual passion for teaching. That will kind of help you to become extremely successful. But, you know, nowadays, if you see some of the practice out there, just because, you know, everybody's doing online teaching, let's just throw some courses out there. It's more like a monetizing additional income source way but you don't really like people you don't like to share your secret you don't you know all the things you mentioned if you don't have genuine interest in teaching your don't students will tell <laughs> yes yeah. very fast yeah you yeah. have to love it you have to love people you yeah. really, really have to love and people. and you know i think you have to be you have to be authentic as a teacher and you have to show vulnerabilities and and not yeah. make students think that you know you're all perfect and every single painting yeah. that you put out there is a 10 plus and 
um, because they, I think students relate to our vulnerabilities and mm -hmm. well, we're all in this together yeah. and we've been through every stage of it all together. We've all been beginners. Yeah. We've all had those insecure moments. We've all had those moments of that I call a crush when you have a crush on a painting. Yeah. We've all, we've been every step of the way and teaching just lets you see that and experience it all over again through another person's eyes. Yeah. I, 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 you know, like you learn a lot from making a mistake, from failing, right? And your students want to see that to see, hey, you fail too. But more importantly is when you fail, how do you fix, pick yourself up and fix it? Like, you know, Shanna, I saw one of your videos or lessons. You're talking about searching for a kind of fail painting and yeah, search, search and destroy. destroy. Yeah, right. And I I, I love, love that. doing those. The, you know, you find a whole different voice with it. And I'm stubborn. I I won't let a painting get the best of me it, it, unless I decide I'm going to totally destroy it. And then it's my decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's, well, there's, there's some freedom in the, in the learning, learning, well, and learning on a piece that you feel is already not working. Right. So you're not afraid to, to mess it up even, even, even more. more. But I don't. I didn't know if you wanted to us to share some of the things that we have, um, that like physical things that we do in our teaching when we yeah class. Um, as far as I think, what helps people be a better teacher? Yeah, and let's um, kind of like talk about maybe boil it down to each one of you. Maybe share like top three factors to be a great teacher. Um, okay. And then you can kind of talk about in a online setting and in an in-person setting because those two are two very different situations right are. so maybe we'll start with that and kind of go from there to drill into each specific arena to say you know online versus in person and just expand from there so well i think i mean in person um i you know i've been i think my very first time i taught a class was when i was like 22 years old at the local art supply store in pittsburgh pennsylvania and you know we were doing little acrylic projects and but some of those people that took my class are still my friends 30 <clears throat> years later <laughs> but um i think for a teacher i think it's important to you know one show up on time for sure um don't come in 15 minutes late you know, and if the class is scheduled for one hour lunch, then you take one hour lunch. I've been in classes where, you know, the teacher didn't show up for two hours later, unless there's an emergency or yeah. something. Um, but the very first day of class, um, I generally, well, of course, I'll introduce myself. I have handouts that I give to all of the students on um, just like key elements of, of a good painting, um, handouts on what makes, or like what makes good composition, my palette, my, how I arrange my palette, do's and don'ts in a classroom situation. Those are just handouts that I give out every single time I teach um, uh, wherever I go. But the other thing I think is important is then I have everybody introduce themselves at the beginning of the workshop and say, you know, their name, where they're from, how long they've been teaching, but then to tell me what they're hoping to get from that workshop. Their expectations. That, their expectations from for me. And so, you know, some a lot of people say, oh, I want to learn more about composition, or I want to learn more about edges, or I want to learn more about the color, but you get a sense of what that particular student their wants and their needs are and and if you can retain all of that information you know it's hard if you got 15 students but you get a sense of what people want and that's what makes a good student so that when you or a good teacher when you go to this person this was the person that said she wanted to learn about edges and then you go to this person well she was the one that wanted to learn about color mixing theory so you know you have to be in tune to that yeah and that's a big part of in-person workshop, right? Is that yeah. personalized learning. So say if today you want to be a teacher who's teaching more of an in-person experience, of course, number one, you got to love people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If not, it's just not going to work, right? Like nobody right. wants a grumpy teacher. And number two, you got to understand, like what you just said, the level of personalization, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think kind is a really big thing too. Even though I've had students say, I want you to be brutal. Brutal is not in my repertoire. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're asking I can be, to be honest. honest. Yeah. 
but I also choose to see the things that they do well. I think it's really important to go in and find out what a person does well, mm -hmm. what they sell at, and how to expand on that. Yeah. yeah, it's a you know when I go and critique a person, I'm you know I'll find something that needs to be fixed, but but then I think it's really important also to find what's good or what is mm -hmm. working in the painting, and you end with that. Yeah, because it's always better to end with a positive than a negative. So interesting. Yeah, and I, I heard this other saying, you know, like when you were going into a situation like this, you don't go and just rip everything down. You build upon what is there already, right? Right. Yes. You, I, I'll tell you a real quick story. I mean, there's you have to, again, discern how much information that person can absorb in one day. I mean, there's there's so much to absorb as an artist. We just can't learn it all on a five-day workshop. Yeah. It's just the way. And, um, but I was teaching a class and the gal was changing her background color and I was trying to go into, a, well, if you change the background color, then this does this and this does this and there's this domino effect and blah, 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 blah. And she just looked at me and she says, just Liz, tell me what color to paint it. <laughs> and so that was, you know, she didn't want to know all that. She just wanted to know just what color and where. That's but, it. And there and are not, two very different students right. that way. Yeah. yeah. And, a good teacher will know. Well, number one thing, a good teacher is a good listener. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. You got to listen and really understand what this person is here for. Some mm -hmm. of them, they're just here to copy exactly what you do. Some people, they're here to learn your trade secret. Some people are here to whatever it is. Like You got to listen to them and find out what they're here for. Right. And then if you're able to deliver what they ask for, then you help them to reach their goal and you help them to become the hero, right? So this, there's another thing that I learned is, you know, in the in what we're doing, you know, like our education type of thing, um, you don't want to be the hero. Students are not here to see how awesome you are. They already know you're awesome. They want a guide. They yes. want you to guide them through the mountain range and when you go up to the top of the mountains, they want to be the one who put the flag up there and say, I did it. Mm -hmm. They know you can run up and down five times to, in a day in 20 minutes. They, they know that. They don't need you to show off and just say, hey, look how fast I can run. No, they want you to tell them all the things they want to know so they can make that journey themselves and be proud of themselves at the end. Right. So a lot well, of times, you know, you just got to remember that. It's also important that if they ask something that you don't know the answer to, or you're not sure, you know, don't make something up yeah. to appear smart. Just say, you know, Tell gosh, them, you know, I, don't I, know. I don't know. I'm yeah. going to research that research for you. That. Yeah. And that's also teaching the students the attitude to seek answer, right? Because nobody knows everything no. and it's okay. You don't know, but like a lot of things I learned from my mentors through all different stages of my life and career is, they show the best mentors of course the best ones they show me how they find answers they will tell me i don't know but hey come here keith let me show you how i find the answer and right. then i learn to find the answer myself next time because he showed me how he gets the answer right so that that is another thing is you know don't try to be overprotective of your status as a well-known artist but at the same time you just got to make sure people understand you have to go through the same process of researching, finding the answers and trial and error and experiment and get better and better. Right. right. There, right. there is no get quick rich scheme. No, the there's audience. none. What do you mean? There's, there's it's gotta <laughs> be some cause everybody's selling that. How can it be none? No. <laughs> you have to put the mileage in the 10 and as a teacher, you have to put the mileage in yes. in the research and the one really, um, advantage of being a teacher is how much you learn, learn. because you mm -hmm. are teaching it's a pretty i think you learn faster because you you're problem solving the entire time yeah. because you're trying to figure out how to get that across to somebody else mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and it's the, the ten thousand hour um yeah. mentality that it does it really does take ten thousand hours to be you can become good at, good at anything, anything. Yeah. you got to put in your miles and your ten thousand become hours. an expert right 
And the other then, thing I think is important in a classroom is to have a, a structured kind of outline that yeah. I think students like to say, today, this is what we're going to do. And then tomorrow we're going to build on that. We're going to do this. So you kind of have a, right. a structured outline. Don't go in there and say, well, what do you guys want to paint today? You know, we both, we both do that a lot. We both go in with an agenda. We go in with some structure and, and a reason for starting with this and then expand on mm -hmm. that into something different and into something different because you can only take a little bit of information um, for a three to five day workshop. You can't give them everything. You, you, you got to yeah. give well, them you, what they, what, as much as they can, they yeah. want to tolerate. Yeah. Well, I, you can, you can give, you can tell them everything, you know, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going right. to absorb. Yes. Everything. They're absorbing part because teaching is kind of like a dance right it's two-way so you can give them like a fire hose experience and then they just walk away drowning or um i just finished casey's workshop last week like a whole entire week and it was draining but even though he's scheduled yeah, every day he he tells you i want you to get here and then the next day we'll be up on top of this and go to the next stage and there are some students kind of like come on come on let's go get, get me more give me more by the same time by the end of the day, they still could not get to the spot where he wants you to get there, right? Yeah. So you got to give them time to absorb what you're trying to come, come across. And you need to give them an opportunity to actually practice, to discover what works, what not, and then just go from there. And if you are able to do that, they actually walk away with more, right? And Right. And as a student, they have the responsibility to come into the class um, open-minded, open -minded, excuse me, open-minded and, and to, to know that they're there to learn and they're not there to show off or, you know, prove that they're better than this other student kind of thing. And that's hard. That's not easy. You go mm -hmm. into a whole bunch of people. You don't, it, it's hard to go back to being a beginner. Yeah. And yeah. Having people well, I, see that. I was, when I was studying, um, with I, I studied with a whole bunch of fine artists and my goal was just to learn one thing that workshop just one more thing that i didn't know before that i could mm -hmm. put in my tool belt yes. and um no going in there and not having the expectation that i was going to walk out and be this awesome artist that suddenly sold in galleries everywhere yeah. but i just wanted one thing and that one thing could be pretty expensive you know when you, your airfare and your the cost and all that kind of hotel and stuff but it was one more thing i had that i didn't have yeah. before and i think that's a good way you know like when we talk about art teaching it's really a two-way thing right you it you're is. teaching you're talking about teaching and at the same time you're talking about learning at the same time because you got to play that role really well like if you are 100 percent teaching then you're forcing upon them but if you're thinking about learning, then you're starting to look at it from their perspective to give them the right thing, the right time, the right way that they can take away from. And what you just say right there, it's very key. Um, like yesterday, we did a live streaming with Ali Zayer, right? And then I watched yeah, it. We watched. Oh yeah, did you see the part awesome. where she's kind of like, Keith, how come you didn't catch this? And I told her, this whole time, this hour, my only goal is to see how you mix. So I really like my eyes are glued to her palette to see how she mixes. And for me, I want to walk away with just that one extra thing. And of course I can go back to review the vid footage. If I want to see the other parts, I can go back. And that's the great thing about what you guys are doing there is you capture all your teaching in a video format that people can go back to review over and over and over, over and over. We are shocked by when we upload our new content for the month, how quickly people are posting their, their, paintings. their paintings that they're, you know, they're copying our work yeah. and, and like the next day. Like, I know, oh, right? Oh. We have gung-ho students though. They want to learn. They are painting. Yeah. We have people that are painting six paintings a month. I know. Yeah. Um, we haven't even painted six paintings. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. We love it. We and love that's, it. that's the great thing about it, right? Because, you know, like people have the desire to learn and then I'm just so kind of, proud of you guys and also i'm proud of our crew here we're Absolutely. making things so much more affordable that people can really they yeah. seriously yeah. they spend probably more money on our supplies than they can learn from both our 
places together because it's so yes. affordable that you can learn from Inspire to Pen and also learn from Sentient Academy and you still have money to buy pens. Well, Shannon and I are joking all the time saying, where were we 25, Yeah, why didn't we have ago? us right? then? <laughs> so yeah. at least we are able to offer that to people now. They have this option to really you know, improve. If they have the desire to learn, we have all the time to produce what, what they want and need, right? It's an amazing time to be an art student and, right and now. And right now, mm -hmm. the world needs more art more than it's art. ever needed. Oh, yeah. Before. Yep, that's yeah. true. So now we kind of talk about the in-person setting. Let's talk about more of online. We kind of transition into... Um, see, I'm pretty good, right? Like, we already kind of smoothly <laughs> transition. See, I'm learning too. Every time I host something, I, I learn something. So let's transition into the online teaching. And we kind of touch up on online teaching a little bit. Like, you, yes, videos are more accessible nowadays, more than ever. And teachers, they are, you know, filming in all different ways. Of course, there's all different formats, but what is a good um, way to create engaging content? Because teaching online is not just, here's a camera, I'm just gonna talk to the camera for an hour by myself. And you see some of the teachings, teachers are so excited with all the, like, there's going to be a fine line where you make a good engaging content, but not too in your face. You know what I mean? Yes. Like through your experience, know. what are the best practices you found? I have to say, I, I do the filming and the editing. And so I'm watching me and Shanna <laughs> all the time and I get sick of watching us. So, so sick and I'm tired probably not the yourself. best person to say what's a good gig because by the time I get the thing edited and uploaded, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sick of that. <laughs> the very first thing though about being a good online teacher is being a good in-person teacher. You have yeah. to, yeah. You, you still have to understand people. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in front of a camera, you still have to have that empathy and have that excitement and it's, it's the same. Well, and I, I mean, I think you really do need to talk through the painting process. I mean, I've been in workshops or watched videos where the artists never talked, <laughs> not one. I mean, they just painted. And um, as a student, they really want to know why are you doing why that? Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Why, uh, what color, you know, what color are you using? Which we always say that's the wrong question to ask but yeah. you know they want to know what colors you're picking up and why and and so you have to actually it's very difficult because you have to use both sides of your brain you have to use the right side to paint and you have to let use the left side, the left to, side to analyze and teach <laughs> yeah so and um but with you that do note, really, what's oh, that oh i just want to mention i'm glad you actually mentioned that because you know with our and you guys have the business knowledge too right like a lot of the business best practice type of thing I always tell the artists, students and say, hey, we are actually better trained to be a great business person than any business person because we are using the both sides of our brain at the same time. That's why we're so tired <laughs> Until you get stuck right, <laughs> right? in the middle. <laughs> and if you think about your, pen, your whole creative process, you are constantly making an executive decision. Yes. You're constantly analyzing something. Right? Is it too yellow, too red, too warm, too cool? Is the shape too big, too small? Does it look right? Does it not look Heart right? All of those is your Maybe. right, you know, whatever side, I always get it messed up. But you know, like the logical analytical side of the brain, if you're a creative person and you are creating and you are doing that exercise, of course, you know, some people, they just throw the pen on there, they don't analyze, right? But if you are kind of analyzing, learning, you can make, good decisions to drive your business, especially, you know, if you're thinking about teaching, of course, if you think about teaching for free, then there's not really that business side of things. But if you're thinking about, since we're 530 now, I'm sure a lot of people are starting to wonder, when are we going to talk about making talk money? About technology. Let's make some money. Yeah. We have that. We Let's have that look, at, now. look at your great list. Because I know you guys have a great list That's going because on. Because we're old and we have no memory. <laughs> Experience. Um, we're that, not old. We're experienced. That, Exper that yeah, is, yeah. Not old. That's it's another experience. thing altogether, though. The learning curve on the technology side yes. for yes. anybody over the age of thirty-five or forty um, gets we're a barely bit, over that. We're barely over that. Gets challenging, and we have 
had to take that learning yeah. curve, especially yeah. the editor here. <laughs> yeah. um, it, that's very challenging. So we've kind of based, put it down to some basic things. The difference between um, live stream teaching and online teaching, recorded. Yeah, pre-recorded versus live stream. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and of course, with Bellamy's production, that is all. That's all been about recordings. Um, uh, and the one thing I can say from watching, from the ground up with Bellamy's, is buy the best equipment that you can afford within your budget. That, mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean everybody can buy the best of everything, but buy the best, the best that you can possibly afford to do it, the, so that you're yeah. putting out a quality item. I, yeah. I. Um, Originally, I hired somebody to do the filming and editing for me, the first few videos that we did under Bellamy's Productions, but I paid him more in a year than I made in a year. So I had I quickly learned that if I was going to make any money at this, I was going to have to figure out how to do this myself because I couldn't keep paying him thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and then not make any profit off of Then you might as well be him. Yeah, it yes. might, might as well have been his company. Yeah. And, um, anyway, so I went out and I, I bought... Um, they're broadcasting cameras, professional broadcasting cameras that were used in news studios, you know, to broadcast news stations. Mm -hmm. um, I bought three of them. They were used, but they were still fairly um, expensive. And we've, I've got one mounted up on the ceiling that hangs down that the shows palette. the palette. And then we've got one that has the whole scene where it shows, you know, we can turn around and talk to the camera and shows the setup and the painting. And then we've got a camera that focuses right on the, the painting itself that's close up. So, and not that you need three cameras, there's tricks that you can, you know, do to get away with one or two cameras. And, um, and the, the, the dia, um, camcorders these days are, are yeah, so I, good. I just picked one up. I just picked up the A53, the Sony A53 and Sony's uh, are good ones. Yeah. 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 I'm excited to really get to know it, get, Play with it a bit yeah so live so I, I mean i as far you have to understand your cameras and you have to learn about white balance and making sure that the color you know the color correction mm -hmm. is there and and focusing and um of course then there's sound, sound. sound. yeah sound is a it's a monster so, itself yeah it, yeah it's i we were talking about this earlier it's equally as important as the video quality yeah if not even more so if it's bad sound people will yeah. just tune out yeah so I, I actually have three different mics and thanks to keith you know this is oh. i <laughs> i made you spend money <laughs> made me spend money and buy more mics but so this is one this is called a movo and it wasn't that expensive i think it was like 119 this hooks directly into my nikon or any camera um, and it clips on and I can record my voice. And so the voice is a lot better, but it's wired. So you can, you know, there's, there's probably a good 20 feet here, but you, you are attached. And then there's, um, what we're using right now is a, a blue Yeti. Yeah. And that's kind of what that, uh, most podcasters use that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. great for this great kind quality. of thing. But if I'm, if I'm teaching and I'm standing back here, or, and, you yeah, know, we already tell it's fading out. Yeah, so you can't hear me. So if you really want to do professional, then this is um, a Sennheiser wireless uh, mic. So it's got a transmitter. They're not cheap. This was very expensive. And so this clips on. When you watch our videos, you probably see the wire. And then, then Shanna's constantly <laughs> doing this to the mic. <laughs> I have to cut down the sound and editing, but so this is wireless, so I can walk around and know if I'm 20 feet from the camera or the painting, it still records um, really good sound. Yeah, it also transmitting takes belly over to the receiver. Well. <laughs> yeah. So um, just in case, if you, any of you are kind of thinking about starting to teach online, um, I don't know if you pick this up or not, but let me kind of reiterate it again: is you the idea of buying the best equipment that you can afford from the business perspective because you know i i'm coming from the business background right and then of course i teach a business course at sentient business school you want the idea you want to get in your head is i am making say if you're rolling out this course you can make say 500 dollars 
then you're gonna say budget in a way that you are able to afford that five hundred dollar can get you like the best thing that five hundred can get you. Actually, it's not the whole five hundred because it covers a whole bunch of things. But you are not gonna go out and spend all your money to get that most expensive wireless mic right in the beginning, right? So you make some money, say five hundred, you get a hundred fifty dollar mic to get your quality up, and then as you start to make your first thousand dollars you have more money to roll into the next thing that you need to bump up your production. So you always going to do it in a way that you will generate some cash flow. And then in accounting, we call it the cash flow generated from operating activities, right? You need cash generated from your business or from your teaching first and use that money to roll into your next expansion and just go from there. But from the beginning, if you don't have some level of quality, that first 500 is probably not going to happen. So yeah. there's a, a little bit of balance that you need to do there, right? Yeah, this this little Movo one that was like 119, I think, it it actually was pretty good. We did our evenings on the patio with it up at the cabin. That turned out And really it turned well. out, the sound turned out pretty good. There's also, um, in editing, um, you know, I use Premiere Pro in editing, but there's also sound plugins and things that you yeah. can buy and, and help clean up the sound. Um, this is for recording live yeah. stream. What about live stream? So the sound on live. Well, the same, well, the same, same thing. You've got, you've got to have a mic or you're going to get echoes and yeah. everybody knows yeah. now. I mean, they watch TV stations or news stations with zoom and, or the, um, and you can hear the echo when people talk, if they yeah. don't have a good mic. Yeah. So th those are some basic things, you know, very bare minimum you got to have a good camera to yeah. capture and of course um i think one thing we left out is lighting lighting uh, lighting, lighting oh. is very important because if you don't have good lighting thinking. especially if you're oil painter you're gonna hate yourself yeah. yeah like lighting is is good i've i've got three different lights mounted on my ceiling that that again you know illuminate the painting illuminate me illuminate mm -hmm. the palette remove shadows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes the shadows on if you've got light coming from both sides then mm -hmm. you're going to have these two shadows on the painting from your hand which can be really irritating yeah and and so if for me if i'm right-handed i'm always going to have the camera coming from the left so that that you know the the cast shadow is going away from me mm -hmm. and unless the um unless the artist tends to lean that way a little bit more like the last artist I did. <laughs> so we had to film from the left because he constantly leaned. But yeah, you got to check those those shadows. They can be distracting. Yeah. There's so many little things that you have to yeah. be so aware of. That, well, that... one good tip about those little mistakes um, I found is you don't just go get your equipment and get all excited and turn it on and start going two hours right. and then turn out everything is bad. You set it up, of course, you know, get some best advice from people who have done this before. You set it up, you roll it for five minutes and just go out there, you know, move things around and then go review that footage to say, is light good? Is sound good? How is the cropping? How is the focus? How is yeah. the color? All the things. Check it before you go for the real run. In fact, a lot of times I, I film myself, um, well, I'm by myself running the three cameras, but a lot of times in the in the video, people, I'll come back and I'll say, well, all right, I just checked the footage. It all looks good, so let's continue. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, you know, those are the couple of things that you want to make sure you do, it, especially if you're doing it yourself, because a lot of artists, they're kind of doing this on their own, right? You just want to make yeah. sure, always test it. And one, one big, 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 um, I wouldn't call it a mistake, but just kind of like a tip. Make sure your mic is on. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. true. That's yeah, true. that's a In good the one. beginning, I've done that just kind of like 10 minutes into it. Hey, Brian, hate to say this, but um, the mic was off. <laughs> We've had some funny mic. We've had funny some mic moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and then of course, if you're and live streaming, make sure your camera is, is pressed to record. Oh yes. <laughs> camera is press record. And then another thing is, um, make sure there's memory cards in there. If you're Back recording, cards. 
memory cards. Actually, that um, happened that's another thing that earlier we were... today. When I was over there, we were taking pictures of his work, and then he was like shooting it all great. And then when he reached in to get the card, oh, there's no card in there. Yeah. The other thing is if you're using um, like a DSLR camera or something is to buy a battery that can hook up to, you know, an outlet. So yeah, that you're not like adapter. Power. Yeah, a power adapter and the capture card. Yeah, the capture card for live for live broadcasting. Yeah, yeah. If you were kind of wanting to live broadcast it, there's some capture device. Um, the one we use is called Cam Link 4K, and that one, it's pretty much. I think it's still sold out. It. Yeah. That's because when all this COVID started, yeah. I went to buy one, and it took. I finally found one, but they they were hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, and there are some um off brand stuff you can find on on Amazon and. We've tested some of those and they have some problem with dropping frames and stuff. And the other one we tested out that actually worked and it's cheaper. It's like $90. It's called J5 Create Capture. And that one doesn't go up to 4K. It only does 1080p. But you know, with Zoom, 1080p is the best they can stream out anyways. For live. I mean, of course, if you record it, you can put it on the platform streaming 4K. But as far as live, um, most platforms that stream up to 1080p even they go up that high so um that will work and last time i checked they're still sold out so there are a couple of devices out there um you just need to kind of google it there's a lot of recommendations and that's one thing that you will need to turn your dslr camera into webcam for your streaming so that's why i eventually went with the camcorder um with with the sony 53 because it could go up to 4k and it did really good at live streaming we've yeah, got the, the best of the best for recording but yeah, yeah the, your dslr will usually if i mean if you're recording it's only going to record 30 minutes unless you have it set on live streaming so um a lot of times i'll set up my my nikon i have a nikon d7500 um that uh, I may just do a time lapse. I'll just record myself for a free video for a time lapse, and I'll just use my Nikon, but it will only record 30 minutes. So I set my phone for a 20 minute timer. So when that goes off, then I know I have to reset my Nikon to to re-record. And that's I do those a lot for just you know quick little free yeah. time lapse videos. But you brought up you know platforms is talking that's about a huge, a huge having a platform a to sell your product um, is huge. Yeah, so, you know, there are a lot of options out there and it's kind of hard when it comes to platform. This is another conversation for probably another day because it's just so much more to talk about. And it all depends on what you want to do, really. Like that, that is what the best advice I can give you because, I, you know, Sentinel Academy, I build everything, right? Like I've earlier we we're talking about, you know, we've interviewed 10 plus different platforms and I'll encourage you to kind of try it out most platforms they have like a free trial just to sign up a free trial open it up and then just see what is in there and what it does and of course number one thing you got to ask yourself what is my end goal like what am i trying to accomplish am i doing mostly live streaming courses if you're doing mostly live streaming probably zoom meeting will be pretty good you just need to find a way to you know collect payments and that kind of stuff embedded in your website or whatever but if you're doing more like what, you know, inspired to pen or what we're doing here is putting pre-recorded course up there. You know, there's a whole bunch out there. There's Teachable, there's all kinds of platforms, or even I see a lot of artists that use Vimeo. Um, there's not a right or wrong answer. It just all depends on um, what are you trying to do? Because it's not just the platform that, that hosts your videos. There's a lot of other things that go around it that you need to consider. For example, payments, right? How does your platform interact with say Stripe or PayPal or whatever other way to take payments? And how easy is it for you to reconcile? Cause you don't want to have your platform say someone got the access to your content, but the money is not charged or you trust someone and they're not getting the access. So that is another part you need to pay attention to the two way integration and of course, anytime you talk about an integration, there's one weak spot for you to break, right? So the more integration you have, the more ways for you to break something. 
So you need to consider that and say, if I'm choosing a platform, am I thinking about something that's more all in one solution? Cause that is your content, the payment. And now we talk about also um, the member management, right? Managing the email list. If you even want to send out newsletters, how are you going to manage that? You can integrate it out to MailChimp, but that's again, another integration, another thing to break and another login that you have to log into another platform to manage that. And um, what are There's the other things? Lot. There's a lot going into it. Yeah, and te technical support. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, put, I put this in our little handout. Be ready for technical issues. Yes. It, How can we possibly prepare you for that? Yeah. <laughs> And you know, tech issues, there's a couple of things that you can do to kind of minimize that. One, what we do is, you know, of course, there again, a lot of products out there and you can find um, a lot of things that will accomplish the same thing without spending the big dollars. So one good app or product out there is called Zendesk. So Zendesk, they are really um, a basically enterprise level support system. I know a lot of big, tech companies, they actually use Zendesk for their help desk or even life support. So if you get on Sentient Academy, you'll see in the corner, there's a little bubble say help. And then right now on my phone, I can log in. And if I log in, turn on live, you'll see on our website, it turn into a chat bubble. So you can actually chat with me live. And if I turn it off, you will just see help and you can send me an email and I can reply to you as I get to it. And then actually this past month we upgraded and all of that, just the Zendesk chat is free. And we upgraded to the more of the Zendesk guide. That's what it's called. It's like five bucks a month, but then you are able to build kind of like a Q and A library. So people, when they click on help, they'll be able to ask questions like, how do I upgrade? Um, what is the refund policy? And then they are able to search your library and give them the search result so they can kind of self serve to eliminate some of the tech support questions before they email you the same question. Like I can log in. Can you reset password for me? Or what is the good one that we get all the time? Do I have to be logged in to watch the videos? <laughs> that is a good one. I can't see the videos. Well, did you log in yet? No, in. no. Nope. <laughs> right. You have and, to log in first. Um, what, what are the other ones? Um, yeah, this is just, Again, you got to love people. Like, right. and I and I think that you know, if the students are paying you twenty nine thirty nine or whatever a month, you know, they want to feel special and they want to know that they have access to you if there is a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I try, I try and get back to people as fast as I can. Yeah, um, even you even get back to people at ten o'clock at night. Yes, I do. Yeah, or I, the other day I emailed someone back at two in the morning because I, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> yeah. But you just gotta be prepared for that. And then that's another question you ask yourself is, yeah, it seems nowadays with, you know, Patreon and everything, technology sites, as easy as it can get. You don't even need to know how to do any coding or anything. You can spin up a site, start and put, put content out and then start monetizing. But are you prepared for everything that goes with it? Right. It's a full-time job. It really? is a full time. It's a full, it, it is a full time. And job. it it does take away from your painting time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. During especially during the learning curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where you want to say, you know, do I want to figure that out all by myself or do I want to outsource it? And if I outsource it, does it make sense? How am I going to break even if I outsource it? And if you're going to do it yourself, um what is your hourly wage equivalent? Cuz every hour you take yourself away from painting, you're costing yourself on average, say, you know, an artist make on average like $50,000, then your hourly equivalent is about 20, 24, $25 an hour. So if you say, I'm going to spend like five hours every day to do this tech thing, 25 times five, that, that is your cost that you're losing. It's an opportunity cost, right? Because you're I've, walking away from I've your production. Learned, I've learned that if I sit down at the computer at eight in the morning, and I'll say to myself, okay, I'm just going to do, just work on the computer for an hour and then I'm going to go paint. 
that never works. Yeah. If I sit down at the computer, I am there all day long. Yes. Because now I'm in the left side of my brain and I'm working technological stuff or I'm editing or putting together newsletters and putting out fires, that kind of thing. So I've learned that this is a computer day or this is a painting day. Yeah, and that's a good way. That, you set that aside. Not and realizing that if it's a painting day, though, you might have to stop and put out a fire sometime, you know, for somebody. But I've learned that uh, how many times have I said, well, I'm going to work on the computer for an hour. And then she comes over at five o'clock and I'm still sitting You're at the still computer. still there. Yeah. And that's the, the danger that you'll be facing when you get into this game is you're yeah. going to be spending a lot more time than you expected yeah. on a lot of these other things to make sure, you know, things are happening, bugs are cleared and all that stuff but it doesn't mean that you know it's not worth the time it just again oh, it what are you, you in the game for it. yeah you gotta just love it right you gotta love it yeah well and it's uh, you know i also it's important to know that the product that you put out is part of your reputation yep and so you want to put out as good a product product as you can mm -hmm. um, so that you know they somebody doesn't come back and say oh well those videos are horrible you know you don't yeah that reflects on you as an artist and as a person. Yeah. Right? And again, you know, like when I'm teaching the workshop to teach people how to do this kind of stuff, because, you know, I I do have that workshop built and I'm not really taking any students right now, but, you know, stuff I, I will tell students to build their online teaching platform. One thing I always tell them is you need to remember this game is not about Wait, what is it called? It's a continuous improvement instead of a delayed perfection. That's that's the one. Yes, okay? that's a great way of. You it. want it to be perfect, but it does not mean that you don't roll it out until it's perfect. That's the delayed perfection. It's a continuous improvement game. You put right. something out at your best knowledge in at your current ability, as best as you can go. Put out there, and then as soon as you put it out there you absolutely you find ways to make it better and you make it better and you make it better and you make it better and then that's how you become an industry leader right because every time when someone sees you with new content out there you're better than the right. yesterday version of yourself and that is where you will kind of start to roll into this continuous improvement towards your perfection but if you're all about delayed perfection you are never gonna roll it out because it's never going to be perfect. No. Right? I've watched that with Bellamy's production, your videos. Every video seems to keep getting better, better and better and better. Yeah, because you learn something new every time, right? Like this angle oh, is not sure. as good. Or, you know, from student feedback, they, they wish, oh, I wish I can see the palette. Or maybe I'll figure out a way to get the palette shot in there. Yeah. Blah, 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 and all that stuff. So, you know, like um, if you guys have any questions in your audience right now, if you want to shoot the questions out, feel free to do so. We yes. have probably the last couple minutes, 10 minutes, under 10 minutes. So we can answer some questions if you have any. But, you know, other than that, I think we cover a lot of stuff. And of course, um, this is the teaching side, right? Let's kind of switch gear to kind of learning side. You guys are doing a workshop coming up in two week, a week and a half, right? Uh, yes. You're the 27? The yeah, and you're 28. I'm excited because I'm actually going to be going over there. Yeah. yeah. You'll, gonna, you'll be here with us. Yeah. So it'll be nice to, you know, see your garden and maybe you'll put me to work. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can dig up some more time. Yeah, <laughs> I need more time. <laughs> yeah, but it'll be exciting to see Shana do a landscape yeah. workshop and really get to, you know, you know, see her put all this art teaching to practice. Right. Yeah. And if you guys are, you know, learning landscape painting, that's a great one to take. And I'm excited to learn I that find. from you. And then Liz, you're going to be doing another floral. And I, mm -hmm. I know you sent me a couple pictures to pick. I can't make up my mind. So yeah. maybe we'll throw it out there and see. Well, there's there's thousands more where those came from. <laughs> right. So but I want to. Can I just show? Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah, trying, yeah. but I want to show everybody what our what our September lessons. Can I do that? Yes, of course. I'm excited. So, you giving people a preview? Yeah. Well, this is um, so Shanna. The color looks a little saturated. 
but she, we went up to my cabin up in the um, oh nice mountains, up in the UNS um, the UNS and she painted this plain air so, so a September lesson for our, our basic and all access members for Sh um, Shannon's full length video is a plain air a plain air piece. And she did an incredible job. Lot, lots of greens. It was really, really that intense color. Yeah, we, we realized we're both into greens. And then this is um, mine. It does look a little saturated. Yeah. Nice. Still, so. That is so great. You guys just keep it up every month. And then you're producing more content than anyone I see out there for a monthly membership. A lot. Yeah. That's And then, of course, you know, with your existing business knowledge, product review, art history, you name it. And then, you know, as we team up, we're going to bring in a lot more artists, talk more about the real life side of being a professional artist. Just, you know, if you guys want to continue to grow, do this as a career, we're going to talk a lot about um, just real life best practices, experiences and you know, success factors and just help you guys to find the next step to to excel. And, you know, there's so much more that we have to know how to do these days to be a professional artist um, mm -hmm. as compared to, you know, 15, 20 years ago of yeah. what it took to be a professional artist. There's so much more now because of the internet and, you know, websites and all that kind of stuff that you didn't you didn't have way back when. Yeah, the so. tec technical advance advances or... Yeah. Sometimes. Not only that, like even nowadays we're talking about international, right? Because we, we have, it's been a couple months that like, we always have people asking, when are you guys going to have it in, in, in Italian? When are you going to have it in Spanish and Chinese, Japanese, uh, Hindi? I think no, that is that the name of the language in India. And just all different things or even you know subtitles that there's always so much more to do and just i mean it's a long game and we just gotta make sure you know if you are into our teaching you just gotta be passionate about yeah. teaching right and then then there's marketing after you oh yeah put all that together and you've invested your entire soul into putting these lessons together how do you let you people know or no or you don't have an audience so yeah. that's a well, that, that will be another topic for another day because that itself can be as long as we want to make it. Yes. Right. And of course, you know, like um, an hour is not a long time, but it doesn't mean that we won't be talking about that in the future. So yes. um, I think before we go, I have a thought that I want to share. It came to me. Now it escaped. Dang it. I'm getting old. <laughs> Shoot. You're we're still You're older. still a baby. We're still older than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm, yeah, I'm starting to have too many things in my head. But, well, so if we I think of it later. Hard drives. So can I, speaking of that, while you're trying to remember what yes, you want to yes. say, I, so to be a good teacher and everything, I also think it's important to know at, that you can recognize time that you need as a person or as an artist or an individual that you need downtime and that yes. you can't go a hundred miles an hour seven days a week there are, there i can i can go for a fairly long time you know run 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 but then there comes a point in time where i hit a wall and and i go to my decompress place which for me is watching sci-fi. Oh, and it may be just a day where I just sit there and veg on the couch, and I just let myself watch Star Trek all day long. How many times do you come over and, and I'm, oh, oh your <laughs> Star Trek song? But that gives my chance of my brain a chance to relax, and I decompress. You have to. You have yeah. to decompress because teaching painting it is so exhausting. It's exhausting on our bodies. It's exhausting on our mind. On the, mm -hmm. And you have to take care of yourself. Yes. She has her. She has her pool. I, I have a. I have a swimming pool. Wait. It's not a nice one. You okay? Because you didn't tell works. me to pack swimming gear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It it's the about the only place I can go and not work. I'm not okay. working out there. And okay. I that that's kind of my downtime. That's yeah. where I do my downtime. But down that's time. important to take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, interesting enough, for me, my I always built up this 
high stress point, right? Because I, you know, I have to handle all these things. And when I can't take it anymore, I go and paint. There you go. There. You, well, that yeah. is true. Yeah. Right. So for me, if I'm I a bit up, up with my you. hand. Everything goes away. Oh yeah. So yeah. now that thought came back to me. Okay. So, um, I share. There's a longer version of this in the business course, but I'm just gonna get a brief one. There. This is coming from my mentor. So he he warned me because when he saw me quit my job and do this thing, and he's like, "Great, Keith." I can see you are passion, passionate about this thing, but I just wanted to warn you about this thing. Say, you, you know, when you are passionate and then you're desperate, that is a very dangerous combination. Okay. So be, be aware and catch yourself when you put yourself in a passionate and desperate situation. You got to recognize that because at one point with all the hard work you put in with all the passion if nothing is moving quite towards the right direction you're he heading or thinking about in my head towards from the you know income perspective you may start to get desperate and then when you start to get desperate you just got to watch out that means you're vulnerable for any scam that's out yeah. there you know marketing scams or even you know like the most desperate action I see from the art world is you starting to offer discounts and just cut prices and when you do that you are selling insecurity and people can really smell it yes. people want to learn from successful artists collectors want to collect from successful artists nobody want to learn from someone who's not insecure or don't think they are successful so if you're gonna do this thing you gotta build your confidence and if you have good teaching good content good art people would come to you you don't need to you know cut your price and just starting to run those gimmicky sales tricks right that there, is when you are starting to just go down yeah There's that would just go downhill so just make sure you are passionate but not desperate so we and we firmly believe that you should you know give more than mm -hmm. Um, then you you take back because yeah. when you give more you're gonna get more back yes um so that is our philosophy and because we do feel like we we give everything we have yeah and i feel that too that you know that's why we, I, I love this partnership and the funny thing about the gift thing i have i have so many mentors they, they're so wise and they're so giving too like this one he he's my last cfo He's this great guy. We go to lunch once in a while. And then he told me, the more you give, the more you get. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. remember that. The more you give, the more you get. Yeah. So if you're that's a selfless life. person. That's life. You know, in yeah. Like it, you got to just give. It's also about, you know, having a positive attitude and putting out to the universe or energy or whatever saying, you know, I want to help people. I want to do this and I'm going to do my best to do it. And so I need energy to help me do that. Yeah. Because if you ask the universe or your God or energy or whatever your, your higher being is, they're not going to say no. If it's, if it's a, for a good purpose, they're not going to say no. Yeah. And that's kind of how we decided we want to form this partnership, right? Because when you create the synergy, Yes, Instead yeah. of, you know, you, you and I both know there are people out there just outright say, I hate competitors, right? Yes. But I, that said to me, I don't know who said that, but I think I heard it from some bird from, from some other tree, from <laughs> many trees out there. But at the same time, if you love each other in the space, in our community, especially you create a synergy and more people will be attracted to your energy because it's a positive environment. Nobody want to feel bullied, right? Like people want to come here because they, they feel loved. And if you're doing any teaching, just make sure, you know, you're sharing your knowledge with people. The more you share, the more success you're going to get. And that's kind of what we have for you today. And of course, there's workshops coming up and tomorrow night we're going to have Suchitra. Um, it's late session. We're going to do it at eight o'clock. PM because she's trying to make it for her Indian audience. Is that oh, Mountain oh, Standard I thought that Time? That was on Friday. 
No, tom- oh, her workshop is on Friday. Oh, okay, her workshop. Tomorrow it's kind of like a Zoom session at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So in India, it'll be when they wake up. Because, you know, like we're talking about the more you care, the more you share. And she cares a lot about her Indian audience back home. She want to make sure when she has a free session to talk about how to break free from your mentor to define your voice as an artist. As a yes. professional, she wants to make sure that her Indian audience gets a chance to join her and have a discussion. I know it's kind of late in the U.S., but at the same time, you know, we're willing to make it work. So if you guys are going to be around, don't miss that one. And of course, today, this session um, will be available. The recording will be on our YouTube channel, also on inspire to paint website. So I encourage you guys to explore either Sentient Academy or inspire to paint if you want to be a really skilled artist and also know where to go next, right? Exactly. To start your career, to live your dream life like these two we are of living. my heroes living my <laughs> dream life. One day I'll get there, but we're here to share the knowledge and thank you so much for tuning in our kind of the first thanks of- for, yeah. Thanks for hosting us, Keith. We really yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Okay, well, I think um, I'm going to take care of that crying baby. <laughs> but right. okay. thank you everyone for joining today and we'll see you tomorrow or next time okay okay, okay. Bye. thanks okay. bye